We're joined today by the one and only Chris Slade, former drummer for Tom Jones, ACDC, Jimmy Page, Uriah Heep, Gary Newman, Asia, so many bands over the years. And he's with his new band now, the Chris Slade Timeline. They've got a new album out. It's called Timescape. Chris, how's it going today? Hello, Dustin. Is it pretty good? Thanks. Well, I got to say, it's an honor speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining me. Not at all. It's a pleasure. Well, you're playing with a band now, the Chris Slade Timeline. Uh, first of all, can you tell the listeners a bit about how that idea came about? Um, we've been together about 10 years, and uh, I've always wanted to have a band that could play the whole of my career, you know, um, from ACDC back to Tom Jones, you know, if necessary. And uh, I saw them, I, I knew them, but I saw them in a pub, and... Uh, they were doing covers such as Genesis and uh, Kansas and all the prog stuff and incredibly well. So I thought these guys can uh, definitely um, switch from one genre to the other. So really, that's where it came from. Um, and that's where the album came from also, because they can play anything. Uh, and that's what I wanted. Uh, a diversity of uh, music and that's what the uh, timescape this album has got excellent yeah i know you guys as you mentioned uh 10 years or so now and uh, finally the new album is out here and it's got nine all new songs uh, can you tell us a bit about the new album what are we in for um well i hope you can enjoy it that's the first thing <laughs> um it's got uh two sides uh, at least the cds do um there's an original side and a uh, covers side. The covers have things like um, uh, ACDC and the band Asia. I was in Asia for a while. So it's all the music I've been involved in to a certain extent. Um, Earth Band stuff, uh, Uriah Heep, um, all sorts, very diverse. And the uh, solo of them has, has really turned out better than I could ever imagine. Um, I don't know what people will make of it because I didn't go in with any plan. I just wrote some songs and the uh, guys played in them. And it's as simple as that. Um, I'm pleased with the, how they came out because I'd never written um, melodies before. So I ended up writing uh, even harmonies and uh, bass lines even sometimes. And uh, it really hang together as far as i was concerned yeah it, it definitely turned out well and was this kind of the plan for you i know the chris slade timeline probably was more meant to be a live band but did you always plan to uh, release a, an album down the road no um uh yes it was primarily meant to be a live band yes um but uh actually so 12 years ago now um you know, the gigs always go stupendously well, and I mean stupendously well. Um, people, we play for two hours, and uh, at least that's where we start. And uh, nobody's disappointed. They're only disappointed when I announce that this is going to be the last song, and then they uh, really get disappointed. <laughs> and that's after two hours of watching the show, you know? So uh, it, uh, the guys had uh, some songs that, that, when I say the guys, I mean the band, as opposed to my ideas. But it just hung together the way it uh, turned out, actually, the way that Timescape turned out. So very pleased overall. Um, it's been finished now since uh, for a few months. So, you know, they had to do the packaging and the artwork and all the rest of it. So that's why it's taken so long. I'm absolutely over the moon with the whole thing. I think it's brilliant. It's uh, incredible. You mentioned playing for at least two hours or more. And I know there's a lot of bands out there nowadays, especially drummers uh, with, you know, guys in their maybe 20s or so that couldn't pull that off. It's amazing that you're still out there getting it done. Yeah. <laughs> it's been, I feel a bit shortchanged if I have to make it an hour and a half, for instance. <laughs> um, and that is difficult. Uh, to cut the two-hour set down to an hour and a half. It really is difficult. I know it sounds like, oh, I'll take five of those numbers out. No, it don't work like that. You've got to have a, a running order that uh, hangs together. You can't just stick five songs together, you know? 
and there must be a balance of we have two singers so it's uh, making the most of both those singers uh, in fact we all sing uh, but we have two principal singers one for the ACDC um, and one for the Raya Heap Earth Band Tom Jones whatever yeah it's uh it says something about your band and especially I wanted to ask you about your guitarist uh, James Cornford I know you've Obviously, you played with Angus and Jimmy Page, Gary Moore, David Gilmore. I mean, that's got to be intimidating for a, a younger guitarist to come in and know what he's following. Absolutely. I had to talk him into it. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the beginning, he's saying, nobody wants, to, nobody wants to hear me. I said, that's why they're here. That's why they pay their money, James. You know, uh, he is phenomenal. And I think he's grown into his role now. He believes that he... Uh, that he can do it, and he does a wonderful job, absolutely wonderful job. So it's it's that self belief is, uh, and one of my songs deals with that self belief, believe in yourself, um, and you've got to have that in order to stand up on stage and perform at uh, whatever level. Um, you must believe that you are doing the right thing uh, for the crowd that's in front of you. So that's important. Well, and of course, you've been playing drums at a high level for uh, about 60 years now, I guess. So, you know, dating all the way back to when you mentioned playing with Tom Jones in the 60s. And I mean, it's amazing the people you played with and, you know, also the longevity. I mean, there aren't too many drummers out there who have had the, the career that you've had. No, I'm very, I'm very, very pleased to still be doing it. And we travel by road, you know, we travel by van. When we go with with the equipment and uh, in a different compartment, I might add. But uh, you know, we travel even down to Italy. Um, we we travel together in the van and uh, across Germany. We went to Poland a couple of months ago. We've been to Eastern Germany and uh, all points beyond, actually. So uh, I love doing that too. I love going to different countries. Uh, we went down to Spain as well. You know, all these places take about a day to get to. So it's awkward if you, they wanted to play the same day. We've got to travel and then if they, if it's a long way away, we've got to try, you know, drive and then do the gig the next day. And I can, that way I can use the rock and burst, uh, uh, drum kit and, Everybody can use their own equipment, their own guitars, their own amps, and all that sort of thing. Whereas before, um, if you you had to rent them, and if you were going to fly, you had to rent them. I hate flying. It's the, the security beforehand. I think is just terrible these days. Sure. Uh, you know, two hours before, you know, in those two hours, you can be. You can be halfway down France, you know, or halfway across Germany. <laughs> um, so it's, uh, you know, I, I love doing it this way, the old fashioned way, if you like. Sure. <laughs> how we are, how all, a lot of musicians started. Well, Chris, uh, all the people you've played with over your career, I wanted to ask you uh, your memories of working with Gary Newman. That was uh, quite an interesting uh, time period there. I didn't realize that you had played with him. Yeah, I uh, did an album, and uh, it was great because Gary asked me uh, at one time um, if I knew any fretless bass players. He wanted to use a fretless player, and I said, I know just the man. And uh, it was Pino Palladino. Um, he'd never played bass on a record before, uh, but I knew he was great, you know, and uh, he's with The Who now, and he's been with all sorts of different people. And uh, that was a great experience working with Pino. And then, of course, you eventually joined ACDC. I mean, you were there for the Razor's Edge, uh, which, I mean, that album was really like a major comeback for the band. You were back on top with them for sure. That must have been quite the whirlwind for those guys to be um, kind of back up and on top of the charts again with you in the mix. Yeah, that was exciting. Um, I didn't realize that they had, you know, they, they were downhill a little bit in their career, you know. I remember Cliff saying to me, you know, well, you know, 
we're on the way back up again. I, I thought I didn't know they were down, you know, because to me, ACDC were always up there. And uh, I get people today, like taxi drivers, for instance, um, you know, who have played with or whatever, you know, it's, it's always a question. So I, uh, I avoid those questions actually, but they said, Oh, ACDC, um, weren't they the ones they were, they were big back in the, uh, eighties, weren't they? I said, believe it or not, they're even bigger now. They play to 80,000 people every night. Yeah. Uh, sometimes a hundred and odd thousand. And the, these taxi drivers or people are just amazed. Um, cause they sort of remember. ACDC, when they started, really, they don't think of now, oh, they're still going? Oh, they're still alive? Oh, wow. Yeah, Um, because they don't follow records anymore or any music. And British radio didn't used to play them at all. So uh, like the BBC or something, you know. Um, So it was local radio stations you could only hear it on. So... It's surprising how that the razor's edge, uh, and I've read it many times now since, um, brought them back up, you know, into the mainstream again. That's how people have been putting it, which seems crazy to me because they always were there and always have been. Um, but, you know, that's people's um, uh, view of things. Yeah, you mentioned... Uh- playing for large crowds and i gotta say the the album and the video for acdc live i mean that was huge for me when i was younger and you know a lot of other people and i think i watched it daily for for years and i always thought well having the bass drums on both sides of you uh that was the coolest thing i ever saw when i was a kid (laughs) yeah that came out of the need to go boom boom in thunderstruck you know (laughs) i thought uh how how can I make this sound so big, you know, and look so big? And I thought, oh, bass drums, shoulder height. And uh, Dick the drum cat went like, uh, what? Do you want what? Oh, uh, yeah, I'll need it tomorrow too, Dick. Okay, boss. <laughs> <That was it>. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, I dubbed the record with Tom's quite a few times to make that big sound. Um, but uh to play it live um it really needed something special so that was it and uh a, a few people have adopted it actually as a as a look a few drummers so uh heavy bands usually um so i'm pleased about that mm-hmm. and i'm pleased it worked definitely well again uh the new album Timescape is out here. Are there any shows uh, coming up maybe in the States here this year? Uh, I don't know about the States, but uh, tomorrow we go to Lyon in France and we work uh, in Europe a lot. Um, we're in Italy in about t- uh, two or three weeks. We're in Germany after that. Um, so I don't know about the States. I'd love to play the States. Uh, I think realistically at the moment, because of visas, that's all, realistically at the moment, uh, I think we could get into Canada fairly easy. But in the States, there's been horror stories of bands getting their visas two months after the uh, tour has finished, oh, for instance. Yeah. And uh, that can't work. They don't understand the necessity for, you know, there's a, there's a time, <laughs> you can't say timeline, can you? Um, <laughs> there's uh, a need to, you know, if they say April the 1st to the 30th, it's got to be that. It can't be, well, that may work for us, you know. That's the way the immigration people seem to work. Uh, I'm okay because I've got a, a green card, but uh, the rest of the guys don't with that. A visa. Well, either way, hopefully we can see you uh, sometime down the road. And in the meantime, we've got the new Timescape album here. Is there anything else maybe coming up we should be watching out for? I've uh, been talking to a lot of people, and they seem very, very positive about it. So I hope that translates into uh, people liking it um, as much as uh, journalists have so far. So, including yourself. Um, So... Yes, I'm very hopeful that it's going to do something. 
and I hope it uh, at least gives the band some more credence than it's got so that we can get some bigger shows. The, the biggest show we've done so far, they're not usually big, but we have done like Hellfest in France, which is 50,000 people. So, you know, the guys are able to play at least to a big crowd. Um, and, uh, you know, the sound and lights guys do it all, you know, in their stride, so to speak. Wonderful. Chris, again, uh, the new album sounds great, and uh, it's been an honor speaking with you today, and I'm glad you're still out there getting it done, and hopefully we can speak again sometime. Yes, any anytime. I'd love to. All the best, man. Bye-bye. And again, that was Chris Slade, drummer for the Chris Slade Timeline, and their latest album, Timescape, is out now.